on Dave. Bye bye, and so sorry if we kept you delayed, yeah? Especially here, you shouldn't be. Have a good flight. Bye bye. Next stop, Qatar. And with the Manani's luggage safely stowed, it's just another typical flight for now, man. This is it. This is the airport. You never know what to expect. Tom's with a guy who's basically refusing to get off the floor or something and arrivals. So I'm just going to go walk down there and see what's happening. It's nearly time for Sarah to clock off, but not before dealing with one final casualty of the night. Basically, I think Steve found him. He was sat up on, he was sort of sat up on the wall, and basically he goes, he asked him what, if he can get up. He goes, no, I'm not getting up. And then he kind of fell over, and then um, he was refusing to give details and such. The man's being taken to hospital with a suspected drug overdose. When I came to PCS, I thought it was going to be more crime-based, but um, the airport does attract people. Attracts all sorts of people here. Homeless, the thieves, you know, people with oh, mentally unstable, things like that. Just, it attracts people. And because the airport is such a, when you go travelling, it's such a hectic, you know, stressful time, all sorts of things happen. next day is like no other at the airport. The terminals are busy and passengers are checking in, but it's all going to come to a sudden halt. Journalists Steve Meller and Russell Clisby are there to record a unique moment. Well, we're just here today because of the um, three minutes uh, silence for the tsunami disaster. And, uh, which is always an awkward one. By that I mean you know, we have to do the take pictures and try and illustrate everybody standing still and uh, heads bowed. Um, and it sort of has to be done, I guess. It's always a tricky one. Just try and be as respectful as you possibly can. You know, that's all you can do. You can have your own private thoughts on the matter afterwards, sort of thing. It's not just people inside the terminal showing their respect. It's everyone, everywhere. They're stopping. Uh, all landings take offs from uh, two minutes to 12 until four minutes afterwards. So there's nothing landing taken off. All pushbacks, start ups, in engine starts. So it should be a complete silence for three minutes at least. Thousand passengers and staff across the entire airport are pausing to reflect on the disaster. But it's awkward for Russell and Steve, who are obliged to keep working. And after three minutes calm, the airport returns to its usual frenetic pace. Two hours later, Ground Operations Supervisor Sid Malik is rushing to an emergency. We had a call where we've got a car that's overturned. Um, police are on site. We've got to find out what actually needs to be done. There's been a road accident and he doesn't know what to expect. I'm hoping that the car isn't sort of splattered all over the place, you know, because then it, it's going to need a bit of cleaning up and that, that can cause congestion. As I say, fortunately, the person involved isn't hurt, so that, that's a blessing. Everyone travelling in and out of the airport relies on him and his team to keep the roads open. Just come out of there. Lucky, lucky one. Only one car was involved, but it's a mystery why it came off the road. She's come round the bend, she's gone to accelerate to go here, and she's just lost control, it's just slipped sideways and literally bounced all the way down here. So very lucky. I'm amazed. Because hundreds of cars use this stretch every minute, Sid needs to know his road is safe. But it isn't. Diesel's leaked on the roundabout. Our, our problem now is to get that covered to avoid any more accidents and obviously get the mess cleared up. The car slid on diesel that spilt from a lorry. Sid sees no choice but to close one of Heathrow's main arteries before another accident. 
thousands could face delays in getting to the airport. Out on the aircraft stands, animal health officer Stuart King has received a tip-off that a newly arrived cargo of parrots are in a bad way. The bird crates looked like they weren't properly stowed for the flight. These ones have got plenty of ventilation here, that's not a problem. But it seems sort of like ones down here, so we don't really like it packed as, as, as this. Oh. They've, um, it's been, the birds are on board, but they've been packed quite badly. So I'm going to try and get a camera out here. Yeah, hi, it's Stuart. Hi, Stuart. How are you getting on with those birds? And they're on board, but can you get someone to bring a camera out? Oh, you're kidding me. No. OK, where are you, Stuart? 320. 320? Yeah. OK, bye. Cheers, mate. Bye. I'm going to try and take some pickies before they offload, if possible and then uh, just use it as evidence if we want to take it further. So I'm going to tell the guys not to offload. Any hold-up on a main road into Heathrow is serious, but with the traffic halted, they're finding more and more spilt diesel. It's like ice. As you can imagine, a motorcyclist has got no chance whatsoever if they hit this. The problem's escalating and the hold-ups turning into a jam. That's about it, isn't it? Armed with a camera, Stuart's collecting evidence just in case things lead to a prosecution. I'm going to take some pickies so then we can like, send them to the airline, email them to the airline. But the priority is to get the birds back to base and examined. Are you going to hang around and get us hand off loaded? The welfare part is the biggest, is the biggest, or well, it's the best part of this job because you're actually doing something, you're actually changing something and making it right, so you are making a difference. But they're doing it as quick as they can, but because they're doing it by hand, um, it takes a bit longer, you know? Ten minutes on, the roads are still shut and the traffic's piling up. But you always get people that, you know, further down, that are impatient, they just think that we just do it for the sake of stopping traffic, you know, I've got nothing better to do. Despite the aggravation to drivers, Sid's got to be certain that the road's safe. Only then can he reopen it and begin to sort out the wrecked car. As far as the vehicle's concerned, that's her own recovery company are going to come and take the vehicle away and we put it in a bit more of a better position for them, make it easier for them. See that's how they should be packed, even in the hold of the plane really, plenty of ventilation, plenty of space between them. The health of the 200 South American parrots bound for the pet trade are Stuart's main concern. He'll only let them fly on to Singapore when he's satisfied they're not injured. The birds are dehydrated and are crying out for water. Literally. A good drink is restoring calm. I mean, this is the uh, most important thing to do before, uh, before feeding them because they'll always be very thirsty because it gets very dry in the hold. So normally we water them first and then feed them. And then we identify them, make sure they are what they say they are on the paperwork. Stuart mustn't.